Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, fantastic news apps. Hi, my name is Guy Train and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge and today we're talking about some fantastic news apps that you can use in your classroom or ask kids to read when they're out of the classroom. And I'm going to start with one I've never talked about and that is the Smithsonian's Twin Tribune. And the Smithsonian's Twin Tribune, and I'm looking for it right now, is a great addition because it does quite a few things if we go home and and the look is very much like a website you can see the uh, different stories that are there and one of the things that i love about this a specific app is that it has a lexile number on it and if you don't know what lexiles are it's worth finding out but this is a way to really see what level the text is level of complexity complexity of vocabulary and what grade levels would be it would be appropriate for now uh, of course grade levels is just a rough estimates and you have students at different grade levels that can read different things so you want to make sure that it actually fits your readers and if readers know what lexile range they're in and it's always a range they can also make decisions for themselves but as you can see you get some general things that are offered in the main storyline and then you can scroll down and see other stories um, most of the stories as appropriate for the Smithsonian are around history, social studies and uh, science. This is in this case a story about science and about uh, moons. And this is fan a fantastic way to do some uh, reading that is informational text. It is also an expository text. And here what you can see on the bottom, you can see what the lexi level is. And you can see that this is a fairly short text, so it is very much readable uh, to students and on top of that you have comments that you can see on the side so you have the main stories and you have comments on the side from different uh, readers and so you can follow what people are actually saying about this story and you can see there's more comments on the side as well so it's not just the core uh, news that are here but also uh, and more importantly maybe the comments that people are making about this there's a teacher sign up you can actually log in or you can use this without a login and this is really important for me we don't always want students to go through complex logins and to have to re-log into websites they can just consume it without it and you can see that the variety of stories if I can get back to it there's a story about Amelia Earhart meteorites, um, again, um, things like the Flintstones homes and things like that. So it's a different kind of news. It tries to stay away from politics and the things that rule the everyday media. So it's a refreshing. It stays away from topics you may not want to bring up. And again, sometimes you do want to bring them up, but uh, this allows you to take a different take on the news. So this one is called Twin Tribune from the Smithsonian. Uh, the next one is one I've actually talked about, but I think it's uh, worthwhile bringing up again. And this one is called Newsomatic. And Newsomatic is for somewhat younger children, it has different kinds of stories. And you can get access to multiples uh, for free, or you can actually subscribe to it and get uh, extra content. And you can see that this is very much visual. It's built for the tablet and it's visual in that way. So the Smithsonian Twin Tribune was more text-based and had a lot less of the visual. This is arranged in a visual way and you can click on a story and then you get a short story and you can see that this is a controlled, it's not too long, and it is in a language that is adequate for upper elementary and to middle school readers and even beyond, depending on the topic. Um, there's always additional content like facts, uh, different uh, ways you can act uh, related to that story, a slideshow with multiple pictures from that story so there's multiple content that you can actually get into and explore further there's often videos and it can even read to you if uh, you want that and I love the go there because it helps locate the stories on a map 
and really help you understand where things are happening and teach geography at the same time. And news is so linked to a place and time that that ability to connect to a map is really, really important. And you can zoom in as uh, you go along and you can see the information on the bottom helps you know what, uh, how long it takes to get there, how far it is, and uh, all of that information that you want uh, to get. So this is Newsomatic, again, very engaging, great content from mid-elementary all the way up to middle school. It's appropriate if you've got struggling readers even beyond that, that's great. And again, this is informational text and expository text st st structures, which is a um, part of our emphasis in the last few years when we teach reading. So this is a great way to connect to the world and uh, to connect to reading. And you can see again different stories around different topics. So this is Newsomatic. When we go to regular news stories, there are a few very good ones that are free uh, online and one of them is the USA Today. I personally really like the USA Today because it allows you to get news in a fairly short format. There's a combination of video and regular text and uh, it is a uh, fairly short stories. So the US, uh, the USA Today is written at about the eighth grade level. Um, it means that a lot of kids can have access to that content. It is today's news and it will include everything. And so you have to think about whether the con all of the content will be appropriate. But you have categories within that so you can go straight to sports and see what happened just recently. And this is, we're filming this right after, um, after the end of the NBA championship. So this is of course going to dominate these stories, but you can also look at technology, travel, money, and other categories. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just a source for news around the United States and the world from a political international point of view. It can be very much in a specific domain. So if you're teaching social studies or if you're teaching economics or something else, this could be a fantastic way to get that kind of content. So this is the USA Today. It's built for the tablet. It's great content and I would highly recommend using it in the classroom. Um, the AP News is the last one I'm going to talk about and the AP Mobile is really interesting and what I like about the AP Mobile especially for somewhat older students it's got different kinds of content but what it is more than anything else it allows to get much, a much more international feed so whereas USA Today naturally focuses on news around the United States and international as it pertains to the United States the AP Mobile app is really international and allows you to look at different regions and what's happening around the world and not just specifically in the United States. And it actually allows you to select. So you can select US news, but you can also select world news and you can create a feed that's dedicated to a specific region. So if you're studying or if you want kids to explore what's going on in the Middle East or in Southeast Asia or in Africa, you can do those feeds as well. So this is a way to get news. And again, this is written at a much higher level. This would be probably middle school into high school as far as the complexity of the text and the ideas that are presented are there. And again, this is not filtered. So if there are uh, descriptions of war and uh, atrocities and other things, they're going to be there. So you, you want to make sure that it's appropriate and it's something that you're willing to take on. So today we talked about some apps that can help you use the news in your classroom for reading purposes, for a knowledge of the world, geography, and other things. And we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.